Okay, you're ready. Good morning and welcome to our next webinar. I'm joined today by the lovely Hayley Jones from Linton and Dr. Sam Hills. Um, so we're going to talk about the latest advances in laser hair removal this morning. Sorry, I've got a little bit of feedback. I'm apologies if you can't hear me very well. Um, so I'm going to open the session up for them to talk to you this morning, and then I will be back to field any questions at the end. Um, please do feel free to add questions in the chat, and um, we'll we'll answer them for you at the end. So I'll hand over and be back at the end. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Thanks for joining us on our webinar this morning. Um, and thanks to Aesthetic Medicine for letting us host. And of course, big thank you to everyone on the front line and in the NHS at the moment. Um, so we're going to um, spend the next 25 minutes or so just running through um, the latest advancements in laser hair removal. Um, now, just quickly before we do that, we've got a presentation um, just to share. So I think I can just scroll through. Let me see. Sorry, bear with me. And there we go. Yep. So for those of you that don't know Linton, I'll just give you a very brief introduction um, to us. So we're a British uh, manufacturer and we also distribute products on behalf of other companies. Um, and we do, you know, a variety of different um, technologies for lots of different applications like hair removal, tattoo removal, skin rejuvenation. And um, it's, it's um, certainly for hair removal, we have got 25 years experience in producing devices um, for this. So um, we were actually a spin-off company from University of Manchester. This is 25 years ago. So a group of physicists actually built one of the first Q-switch lasers in the world for tattoo and pigment removal. That's how Linton sort of formed within the university. Uh, and then we went on to supply product to the NHS and the market's changed a lot, you know, since those early days of only selling lasers to the NHS. Now we are predominantly sell to private clinics, but we do still occasionally sell um, hair removal devices to the NHS because they use them for um, those treatments which, you know, people um, may have after they've had skin grafts where there could be excess hair growth. So, for example, this is quite common in children. You know, if they have a skin graft, when you, when you transplant the skin from one place to another, it can actually cause a, an onset of hair growth. And so Alderhey Children's Hospital, quite a famous children's hospital, they have actually um, purchased one of our hair removal devices, the one we're going to mention today, because it's the latest development in hair removal, because it's an Alexandrite laser that actually operates in a pain free mode. And if you can imagine the kids, you know, trying to get them to settle down to try and have some laser hair removal to remove the hair growth on these skin graft zones, that's a bit of a challenge. So um, they they obviously wanted an Alexandrite because it's considered the best in class, but they also wanted something that offered a virtually pain-free or a comfort mode so that it would be a little bit easier for the children that they were working on. So that's just a very brief introduction to us um, and uh, what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to hand now over to uh, Sam Hills, who's going to take you through some of the theory about the latest advancements in hair removal and why it's different and, and how it's uh, unique in the way that it operates. Hi, right. Hayley, are you handing over to me? I am. <laughs> Do not hear me. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I seem to be having some technical difficulties. I can't hear Hayley speak. Um, okay, I've just given everyone a, an introduction to. Can you hear this? Yes, I can yeah. hear you. Yeah, just giving everyone an lovely. introduction, um, advise them about the uh, why, why Alder Hay chose to have this kind of technology um, in their hospital, and just over to you for the science. Perfect, lovely, thank you very much. Okay, right, are you gonna control my screen or can I do I that? Too? Yeah. Let me do that for you. Okay, wonderful. So, okay, just a quick recap then on how laser hair removal works. So some of you, I guess, may be very familiar with this, but for those of you that, that are not, well, we know if we go outside, it's a hot, sunny day. We know if we touch a, a black car, for example, it's gonna feel hotter than a white car and that's because dark colors absorb light 
And that's basically melanin's job. The reason that we have melanin in our skin is to absorb light and protect us against harmful ultraviolet rays. Um, so, of course, there's melanin in the skin, but there's also melanin in the hair shaft if the hair is dark. So if we have a black hair or a brown hair, then we have um, quite a high concentration of melanin. And with laser or light assisted hair removal, what we're doing is we're using the, the light energy from the laser or from the IPL and we're converting that into heat. So the melanin within the hair shaft, um, sorry, let me just pause this. Um, the melanin within the, within the hair shaft absorbs the light and it's converted into heat. So it's that heat that then in turn spreads out into the follicle and it damages the stem cells within the follicle, hopefully to um, inhibit any regrowth. So Hayley, can you hear me? If you can hear me, just go on to the next slide, please. Wonderful, thank you. So yeah, what's happening? We need the hair for hair removal. We need the hair to be present within the hair follicle. So the hair can't have been plucked or waxed um, it needs to be sitting within the hair follicle. The light is then um, absorbed by the melanin and then in the bulb and the bulge of the hair follicle, we've got those stem cells. If we can get them to about 60 degrees, then we can hopefully damage them permanently and um, not get any further regrowth. So it, it is important, as I say, that the hair is present in the follicle, but we don't want it to be too long. If it's too long, then we end up frazzling the hair onto the skin and uh, that can cause unwanted reactions. So shaved hair prior to treatment, and that's ideal. So, next slide. Okay, so within the skin, we have these things called chromophore. So a chromophore is basically something that absorbs light. And so for laser hair removal, the chromophore that we're trying to target is melanin. But there are, all, there are also other chromophores present in the skin. So we have um, blood and we have water. Now, we want to avoid targeting blood, we want to avoid targeting water, that's just going to cause unnecessary heating in the skin. So there's a region that we call the optical window for melanin. So it falls within about, from about 650 nanometers up to about 1,200 nanometers there about. And that, that's essentially red light or infrared light. And all of the lasers that we use for um, hair removal fall within this range, fall within the optical window for melanin. So really there's only four four different lasers. There's ruby lasers, there's alexandrite, diode, and ND YAG. Of course, we can also use intense pulse light sources for hair removal, but they're slightly different. They have a, they're, they're broadband sources, so they have lots of different wavelengths rather than just one. So if we look here on this um, plot, I don't know if you can see my mouse, perhaps not, but if we look at, um, we can see that the shorter wavelengths have got more absorption. So things like the ruby laser, that was the first laser to be developed for um, laser hair removal. And it's a very it's a very effective laser for removing hair. Um, the problem is um, it's, it's very well absorbed by melanin, but of course we have melanin in the skin. So in practice, the ruby laser was only really ever suitable for very fair skin types. Uh, so for Fitzpatrick skin types one and two, perhaps three, if you were very careful. There are also other issues with ruby lasers. They're kind of slow. They operate at high temperatures. So um, we don't really see them in, in use very much these days for, for, for hair removal. So really the gold standard for laser hair removal in, in fairer skin types is the Alexandrite. So at 755 nanometers, we have really good high levels of melanin absorption. So we're able to get the hair nice and hot and that is gonna give us the best chance of being able to permanently, or at least, you know, hopefully permanently, but certainly for a long line, long time destroy that, that hair follicle so that we don't get regrowth. That's all well and good if you don't have much melanin in your skin, but if you have got darker skin, then the Alexandrite is a little bit too aggressive. So really the ND YAG laser at 1064 is the safest option for the treatment of darker skin types. So for that reason, the Alexandrite and the ND YAG, there are a number of different um, uh, manufacturers who supply an Alexandrite and an ND YAG in one box because then you've got the most effective wavelength for the treatment of fairer skin types and you've got the safest uh, wavelength for the treatment of darker skin types. So if we go on to the next one please, say you. Okay and, and the motor say why is that is 
uh, a great system in that it combines both the Alexandrite and the NZ YAG laser. But what makes it truly unique is that we can also deliver this light in what we call um, the pain, in a, a pain-free mode or an in-motion mode. So it's using a true Alexandrite and a true NZ YAG laser. So it's not a diode laser. We're able to get really nice, short, effective pulse durations. Um, but we've got also got this um, Moveo handpiece that's called, and this is how we can deliver pain-free treatments using this different um, di different technology, really. So prior to the launch of the motors, we've had systems that have been effective, we've had systems that have been fast, we've had systems that have been pain-free, but we've never had a system that combines all three together up until now. So if we can go on to the next slide. Okay, so, so how, how these pain-free systems work? Um, the motors, can, you can still use it in standard emission. So you've still got, you know, you can still use your Alexandrite in your fairer skin types and your NDYAG for darker skin types. Um, but the standard emission, this sort of stamping mode that you're probably familiar with, you get a very high um, snap of light. You get a snap and that creates the pain, that, that peak in temperature that you get. It's, um, it's a very effective method of treating. Um, and if you want the very fastest results and the shortest um, you know, number of treatments, then that's going to be your go-to method. But it's really nice to be able to offer pain-free treatments to our clients, obviously, and there's a huge demand for it. And the way that we do that is, is different. Rather than using that sort of stamping mode, we use much lower fluences, but at higher repetition rates. And we mark out an area on the skin and we just gently glide the handpiece over the skin. And that way we're just gradually building up the heat um, within the hair follicle so you don't have that snap that causes the discomfort. You can get a, in some people you'll get a, a heating sensation, but for people, especially, you know, if you're very fair skinned like me, for example, it, it really is completely pain free for these treatments. In darker skin types, you might feel some heat building up, but we have a um, sapphire cool tip that helps with that as well. So very tolerable treatments. I even go to the next one. The other benefit of using the Movea handpiece is that with standard uh, laser handpieces, you will hold the laser at a certain distance away from the skin. And we get a certain amount of light that's reflected um, doing that. So, Hayley, if we go into the next slide, we can see in more detail that for different skin types, the amount of reflection changes. And actually, the fairer, the paler the skin, the more reflectance you get. So for the sorts of skin types that we're typically treating with the Alexandrite laser, Fitzpatrick skin types one to three, more than 50% of the light that we're delivering is just being reflected from the skin. So we're, we're losing a lot of light in that way. We're going to the next slide. What we find with the Movea handpiece is because it's a contact method, we the losses are much less so we don't have to deal with any losses due to something called refractive index changes when it goes when it hits the air and then goes into the skin and 95 percent of the beam is being delivered directly to where we want it um, so that means we can use much lower energies um, and it also means actually that this in this contact method we get we get a lot less plume and lots of people being um, you know slightly concerned about laser plume at the moment uh, for example. So we can reduce that with the Movea mode as well. And here's a picture that just shows it in motion, the, the, the handpiece itself. You can see that it's in contact with the skin. The tip is cooled, again, to, to help with any discomfort um, that you might feel during treatment, which you know, we don't tend to. Um, you can see the green light, that's the aiming beam. So we can see uh, where we're delivering the light, even when you're wearing your goggles. And it's a very simple treatment to do. We don't have to worry about, in the stamping method, you have to worry about overlapping or you have to worry about um, perhaps missing areas. With this, you just mark out an area, 10 by 10 centimetres, and you just go over the area. When you do that, you repeat that several times until you've deposited a sufficient amount of energy into the skin. Sheen tells you when that is, and then you just move on to the next 10 by 10. And it takes perhaps 20 to 30 seconds to deliver that light. So you can see how you can do four legs in, you know, just in a matter of minutes, really. This was a nice study that was done 
um, some time ago by DECA, who are the manufacturers of this system. And they um, surveyed a number of clients and asked them how much pain they felt with the traditional stamping mode, the single pass mode, and with the multi-pass pain-free mode. And you can see there's a huge difference in the pain score. So it's gone from four out of five to just over one out of five um, out for the pain-free method. After treatment, the, um, the erythema that we see after treatment is statistically the same with both, perhaps slightly more with the single pass mode. Slightly more side effects, so things like that we occasionally see with alexandrite lasers, such as you know some uh, superficial crusting, we're much less likely to see that with the multi-pass mode, pain-free mode as well. So on the next slide. There we can see, What's really important is the reduction of hair is very similar. So there's no statistical difference between the two. Again, we would always say to people, you know, if you want to get the, the quickest results in the fewest treatments, go with the single pass mode. But the fact is that our clients really prefer that multi-pass mode, the pain-free. It's that the discomfort associated with traditional laser treatments can be very off-putting to some people. So it's it's great to be able to, to offer this to your clients. Go to the next one. Oh, I think we may have missed one about skin reaction, have we? Oh, there we go. So that just shows an example of, of the skin reaction after hair. We can see whenever we see this perifollicular swelling, we know that we've got a really good result. So basically, we're depositing enough energy into the hair follicle to, to cause some damage. So to be able to do this, with you know no discomfort at all is is you know fantastic. So okay, I think I might be able to hear you now, Haley. Actually, can you? Oh, I can. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> fantastic. Technology has come back at the last minute. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we've got a question from the audience, which kind of leads on to this slide, um, which is regarding, you know, how is this different to um, another manufacturer, um, the Soprano Ice, actually, that is a diode laser? So, so obviously, we, we, we can talk about diodes generally. How is this different to a diode? Why, why is well, it more effective? Yeah, well, I mean, diode lasers can be a great option. You can treat a nice range of skin types with a, with a diode system. But I think most people accept that the enhanced melanin absorption that you get at 755 nanometers means that the Alexandra is a better option. Um, the, the other benefit, I guess, with the, uh, with the Alexandra is that you can deliver the light in very short pulse durations. And you can't do that with um, a diode laser. So not only so in, in the in the in motion mode, you're using a more effective wavelength, a shorter wavelength, 755. But then in standard mode as well, you're delivering shorter pulses of light. So that makes it more effective as well as, well as the fact that the, the wavelength itself is a better option. And then, of course, you've got 1064, which is a safer option for treatment of skin type six, Afro-Caribbean skin types than the diode is as well. Mm. So, I mean, to put thing, to put it. I guess into commercial terms, you're going to get better results on the um, more difficult cases. So, you know, your white skin and dark hairs uh, Easy. between the diode yeah. and an Alex Yag, not a huge difference. But when an Alexandrite really comes into its own, is when you've got facial hair where it's really thin because that needs a super short pulse. So often a lot of diodes, particularly diodes that offer a comfort mode, they do struggle with that very, very fine facial hair just in the last few treatments. Um, whereas with, if you've got an Alexandrite and Indie Yag, you can use the comfort mode, but because it's an Alexandrite, it's better wavelength absorption, so better for finer hairs, it's better, it's shorter pulses, so better for thinner hairs. And it's also then better because um, you can, with, with the motus, then switch it into standard mode, you know, to finish off. Let's say you do four sessions in your comfort mode and then, you know, move into a couple of sessions in your standard mode mm. to get any ultra, ultra, ultra fine ones that you may have missed. So what's the difference? It's patient satisfaction. You know, it's knowing that you've got a device, a technology that is more effective than anything else out there. And there are a number of diodes in the marketplace that actually um, claim that they are 
an alexandrite and an ndyag wavelength aren't there sam i don't know if you can still hear me yes i can yeah i, can. I wanted to explain the difference why is a diode that delivers a 755 light not the same as a true alexandrite laser what's the difference so so the diodes um diodes have, have come on leaps and bounds in the last few years it, i mean it used to be you'd get eight ten nanometers maybe 920 and, and that would be it but now we can get a whole host of different wavelengths different colors of light you've probably seen that with leds in the home you know they used to be just red didn't they but now they come in all sorts of colors um so we, you can get 755 and you can get 1064 with a diode, but you're still not getting that, those short pulse durations. And that's really, really key. In order to get those fine hairs, you need to have those short pulse durations. So you're not, you're not getting that with a diode at 755 nan nanometers like you can with an Alexandra. The, the other thing to add to what you were saying earlier, Hayley, about the fine hairs is fine hairs we know are tricky, but what's also tricky is hair with not much melanin in it mm -hmm. and so for that so for those mousy brown dark blondes red hairs they're going to be really difficult to treat with anything other than uh, a, an alexandrite laser mm -hmm. so it just opens up more options mm -hmm. of who you can treat another reason why this is a big advancement in laser hair removal is also because alexandrite has been very restricted to lighter colored skins in the past However, when you utilise this advanced technology, you can actually use the alexandrite on the skin types one all the way to six. So you can use actually this on a, on a black skin. So that means it's just it, it is a huge advantage because there's lots of particularly skin type fours that have that fine facial hair where they know the Alex is going to give them the best results. Um, but they're very nervous about having those treatments, particularly when, you know, it's the summer months and so on. So it just gives you it gives you like ultimate flexibility, really, in your clinic. Um, and obviously, the you know, normal things apply. You've got from a very, very small two mil spot up to a 20 mil spot. You can do vascular pigment rejuvenation. Um, so, it, you know, it's a it's a it's a very good system for giving you a, com a real competitive edge at the moment because there is no other device that where you can claim the use of alexandrite true alexandrite laser within that comfort mode and being able to treat all colors of skin so um, we have some questions vicky i don't know if yeah we, we do i thought i didn't really want to interrupt at the wrong time but we've um, we've got a couple of questions on the chat and we've also had um one on Facebook i'm having trouble well. hearing vicky can you hear her Hayley? yes Right. Okay. Sorry that you're having some issues. Back to me. Um, <laughs> I can okay. clearly only hear one person at a time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll hopefully Haley can hear me, and then we I can get this answer. She can relay if it's something. Yeah. Else. Yeah. So, and um, one of the questions that we had, which I think is um, quite interesting on on Facebook, is um, so they said that you showed the charts on pain levels, and they're based on average pain levels, but that everybody has a different threshold. So do you um, advise that people kind of ask people what their pain threshold is or get an idea of that beforehand so that you can manage their expectations? So, for example, somebody who might have a, a low pain threshold might have a different experience with treatment to um, to somebody who is more tolerant of pain. Yeah. What do you kind of advise pain's on? Pain's really subjective, isn't yeah. it? And I think, you know, with anyone who is feeling a bit nervous or uncomfortable about the treatment, then the more modalities you've got to enable that treatment to be um, effective but feel as comfortable as possible the better so you would definitely I mean everything that we do we patch test so within the patch test it gives people like a bit of an introduction to it and and we always train our our team in you know we're asking about pain on a scale of one to ten and we're looking for certain numbers depending on whether we're using comfort mode or normal mode and we just check that people are okay in those parameters like and if someone is finding it extremely uncomfortable there are other things that you can do you can use cold air coolers you can use um, even gel packs ice packs things like that if needed but to be honest with you you don't really need it you know it's one of those things that if you're using it in the comfort mode for sessions one to four you get rid of most of the big thick bulky hair you know mm. and so when you're down to session five and six the hair's already got thinner finer it's got less dense so even if you switch then to normal nd yag or normal alexandrite you still have a a lot more a much more comfortable treatment just less target in the area 
I've actually had it, so um, and you have, it, yeah, no, and it, I didn't feel anything at all. And obviously, you've got really dark hair, haven't you? I've tried lots of different treatments, varying from you know that stingy ping kind of feeling, which is tolerable, but you know, and I really didn't feel anything at all. Um, and I had it on a you know sensitive area, you know, hormonal hair around the face, so um, mm. it really, from my experience, does isn't painful. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've also had, um, you've answered that one. So for skin types four to six, which is more effective, standard Endi YAG or the um, Movio Alexandrite? Hopefully I said that right. <laughs> yeah, so the Alexandrite is gonna be more effective um, uh, if you're, if you're um, and, and it's certainly something that you can use um, for the first, say, four sessions. Mm. The only thing I would say is, if you've got a couple of, because alexandrite is quite um, shallow in its nature, if there are some hairs which might be particularly deep, potentially your ND YAG could, you know, get a better result there. Um, but it's it's really hard to say between skin types four, five, and six because it depends on the hair as well that you're treating. So on those thinner, finer hairs, you're definitely going to find that the Alex is going to be better. Um, but on the but as someone kind of moves through their course of treatments to have the flexibility to choose to use the ND YAG is perfect. I don't know if Sam can hear us. I, I didn't actually hear the question there, but just to add to that, what one of the, the benefits of still having the standard mode is that when you've got very small little areas, sometimes, you know, sort of between the eyes, top lip, then the in motion technique, um, you just don't need it you can just do a few shots in mm -hmm. standard mode so i think having both options is really important that probably didn't it's... answer the question that you, that you asked <laughs> at all, so sorry. no i think it's a, it's there's never a one-size-fits-all approach is there you've got lots of tools at your disposal to um... it's about the flexibility you know yeah. and, and for me that in a commercial setting that all comes down to patient satisfaction mm -hmm. you know if you're looking for the highest level of patient satisfaction because that that is the most effective way to get clients to rebook and to recommend. And that's the cheapest way to market your business. So yeah. if you can get rebookings and you can get recommendations and they trust you because they've had great results, like the more flexible your toolbox is, it's all about um, making that, that patient satisfaction as high as possible. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, we want to give people a good treatment, but of we want course. them to come back and <laughs> You want them to come back. There's no point if you, you go for one session and think I'm not coming back for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So another question we've got is, is the spot size changeable? For example, mm -hmm. I think we've touched on this actually for treating the smaller areas. So, um, such yeah, as the low, low low spot sizes. yeah the, so anything from a two mil, you know, up to a 20 mil. So there's various different options that people can decide to put into the package. And um, how long does the effect of the hair removal last in terms of comparing to different lasers? And, and I guess as well, that depends on the area that you're treating, because I know from experience that hormonal hair doesn't always have as, as good a clearance, whereas I've had my underarms done and I've never, you know, years later, have had yeah. no regrowth. <laughs> yeah. So it, it doesn't matter what technology you use. If you get up to that 60 degrees, then you'll get that long term hair reduction. OK, it's more about are you able to get up to that 60 degrees on the more difficult hairs and the difficult skins? So it's more, it, it, there's, there's not really any, and Sam, jump in if, if, you're, if you have more to add to this, but if it, it doesn't matter what machine you device you choose, if you get that hair follicle hot enough, then it should not grow back, okay? Obviously on the face, it can be more hormonal driven and that will happen. What, so it so it doesn't necessarily give you a, a longer lasting result. What it gives you is a higher percentage of hair follicles that you destroy. So you get more clear hair free zones, if that makes sense, because yeah. there's some devices that because they haven't got the short pulse durations or they're not Alex, you know, they might not get those hairs that have such low melanin content that are very thin and fine. I guess, Hayley, what can sometimes happen as well is that rather than completely destroying the hair, you can just modulate the growth so that the hair comes back and it's finer, for example. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this, with, you know, with a good technology, you've got an increased chance of actually just getting rid of it. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, even if we can guarantee that that hair that we've treated is never going to grow back, what we can't say is that a neighbouring vellus hair won't turn into a terminal hair if there's any hormonal changes, for example. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 
all this technology seems to be, you know, it's only been around really for, well, I guess it was from the 90s, you know, mid 90s where the first uh, laser was approved by the FDA. Mm. But, you know, I haven't had a treatment for 14 years in my underarms and I haven't had any regrowth in that time. So. <laughs> it's a very effective area, I think, that one, isn't it? It's good. Mm. I guess, I guess this is kind of related. Someone's asked what is the best laser for hair which has been removed by tweezers for many years. So um, I suppose there's another, that's another, many women do, don't they, pluck the hairs particularly around here. And if you go for treatment, you're told not to do that and to, um, to shave. So um, does that make any difference? Well, if the hair is a lot thinner and finer, um, then, then that's really what we're discussing now in terms of alexandrite being the gold standard for that. So if you've got, I mean, it depends where the hair is, doesn't it? I mean, sometimes yeah. on the, the, you know, this area, they can actually be quite thick and quite stubborn, but usually they're quite thin, they're quite fine, they're quite damaged from years of waxing. Um, or, and, and so if it is in that very, very sort of frail, very thin state, um, it has a a thermal relaxation time that requires it to need to be heated up like shock heating almost and that's where that short pulse really comes into it and that's why Alex like gold standard for very very little melon in there and then you know shock heating that that actual hair itself so okay um also somebody's asking about the prices um of the how much the devices cost are we yep. able to give them some idea <laughs> Um, yes, the best thing to do is email me if that's okay. So you can drop me a line on info at linton.co.uk and I can go through pricing, leasing options, etc. So etc. So just info.co.uk. I would say as well at this time, we're um not necessarily from Linton, but with our finance partners, we are offering some really, really nice, attractive packages. I know I don't want to do like a sales pitch here for you, Vicky, but you know, for genuinely for people that are thinking, I do want to invest, but obviously now is a is a worrying time for people, isn't it? You know, we've managed to team up with some very generous funders who've given us some very nice um, deals where you only pay 10 percent and then just 100 pound a month for six months. It's not going to be available to everybody. Um, but certainly that is, I think, a really good offer. Um, and that's something that we can facilitate with any device at Linton. So. A I'll big get consideration. Horn it in. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. It's a big consideration for people right now, isn't yeah. it? Everybody yeah, wants to open the doors to their clinic again and, and be flourishing in business. And um, yeah. we had a, a webinar this morning on all the finance kind of um, stuff and all of the prices mm. and things. So it's an important thing for people. Mm. So um, we do have a couple more questions as well. So let me just scroll down and see. Oh, someone said we have the Motus laser at university and we have seen great results. So that's that's nice. That's to um okay i've asked that um is it mandatory to shave the hair before the procedure women are reluctant to shave their faces and how do you proceed in this case so it's kind of similar i suppose to what we were just talking about with the the tweezing i certainly experienced that where i had the um mm. that it was i guess it's a myth that if you shave your hair's going to grow back worse people always say that don't they <laughs> yeah and that is a myth so shaving just makes the hair feel blunter because of the way you've cut it and therefore it feels thicker but it's not affecting the growth in any way um yeah women definitely um don't want to shave and we completely understand that but the hair can't be waxed or tweezed in between the treatments or be just before the treatment because we need to be able to see the hair to be able to treat it so there's not a lot of way around that you know some people prefer to use um some small um scissors just to trim that hair um or trimmers you know so you can get some really nice female sort of trimmers that you can use instead so it doesn't feel like you're taking a razor you know to the face um but what we would say is you know by the time you're a couple of sessions in then it's it's starting to make an effect you know and to make the hair certainly feel less feel reduced so it's not always the case that they're going to need to continuously shave you know during the whole course it's just that that initial period let us get it under control and then it may be um the case that they won't be able they won't need to do that you know perhaps as frequently Okay. I guess another advantage of, of shaving is that um, you, if, if you're having electrolysis, if you're having waxing, you have to have some hair growth 
you know whereas if you're having laser treatment you can remove the hair every single day you can shave it every single day if you want to I know lots of people won't want to do yeah. that but it means that you don't have to ever have yeah. a time yeah. where you've got visible hair so yeah. so and they yeah, do people, do now as well sometimes people just want to be sort of told it's okay to shave yeah. and it's not going to come back it, work. Yeah. 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 I think they do yeah. some nice very um specific kind of little facial um tools for women now as well for like almost like dermablading type things that you can use at home for particularly for facial hair and um some of the um shaving brands so which just makes it a little bit different to getting a full-on razor <laughs> yeah razor out, quite like, psychological like, isn't it really it's... i think so yeah so one of the other questions was do you think transgender clients who's doing facial hair removal need to, more sessions than women who are doing the same area so obviously a lot yeah. of facial hair removal questions this morning yeah. it's obviously a big a big oh area. it is yeah it's a huge area of facial hair removal um i might throw this over to sam actually sam do we think that transgender clients who are doing facial hair removal need more sessions than women who are having the treatment in the same area yeah they they oh, sometimes they do purely because well there's usually more hair to remove um so depends what hormone treatments they're on so um occasionally that will help to start suppress some of that hair growth as well but we i mean with with facial hair growth it's it's always trickier because of you know because it's related to underlying hormones so even women who've got polycystic ovarian syndrome for example we know they'll see that male pattern hair growth very often um we're only treating a symptom of that condition we're not treating the underlying cause of the hair growth so they can sometimes need more treatments so it, it will dip, you know, with, with transgender clients, um, it, it, yeah, it can it can take longer sometimes, but it just depends what your starting point is, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll get good results. If the hair is coarse, it it will tend to respond more quickly than someone who's got very fine facial hair. So mm. um, this is quite an interesting question, and I guess you're well placed to answer this because you do so much, so many different devices within the Linton um, portfolio. But someone's asking, are IPL machines outdated now? Nope. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so Linton, Linton IPL is unique, okay? And I know every company is going to say that, but give me two minutes just to explain why <laughs> our IPL is so unique. Because you know what? Linton IPL versus Alexandrite. Okay, yeah, there is a difference. Your Alex will get more clearance, but the difference is not huge. Okay, it really, really isn't. And IPL is a great value investment for a business. Our IPL was actually designed within a university as part of a PhD project. It's the only IPL in the world that has come out of an academic project. We spent, well, we didn't, John Exley, <laughs> our, our MD, spent four years of his life right essentially trying to mimic laser with ipl mm. and, and so every single element of a linton ipl is tweaked and tuned and bespoke like we don't buy any of the, the sort of off the shelf flash lamps and things like that that other companies do it's all bespoke it all works beautifully together and essentially what that means is that the ipl light it, it, it's not not all ipls are created equal okay the light that comes out is significantly better quality in a linton ipl and because of that we can achieve pulse durations that are shorter even than an alex okay so so we can actually get in in certain circumstances where we need it a pulse duration which is less than a millisecond it's a sub millisecond pulse and we can put it into pulse trains that are big or short for darker skins or lighter skins and it's like it's it's absolutely a, a versatile flexible wonderful tool to use that gets you amazing results i don't think we've ever 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 sold an ipl to someone that's turned around and said oh my patients aren't happy with the hair removal mm. like that that just never happens and it's the but limit unfortunately ipl does have a bit of a bad rep because yeah. it they're, they're a bit easier to build if you're just building them kind of you know from off the shelf parts um but ipl from Linton is, is really in a totally different bracket. So if you've got a Linton IPL, no, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Don't worry. It is one of the limitations with IPL that you can't treat darker skin types. So that would be why you would. Well, this is a really, really um, good question. 
Yes, because a lot of IPLs only allow you to put two or three pulses in the train. Mm. OK, so what that means is if you want to deliver, say, 10 or 11 joules, you've got to do that over two or three pulses and you, and you can't make that longer or shorter. That's different with a Linton IPL. You can deliver 10 joules over four pulses, five pulses. OK, and what does that mean? It's about skin cooling time. So each pulse heats the hair. I have to get used to doing this in front of a camera. Hang on. Yeah, not the way. <laughs> each pulse heats the hair up. But because we've got so many pulses, we put little delays in between them, which cool the skin. So the hair's getting hot, hot, hot. Skin's cooling down, down, down. Yeah. And because we've got like this long pulse train, the Linton IPL, they're used um, on in some clinics that treat only skin types four and five. Okay, interesting. We don't recommend it for a skin type six. No. Okay. But skin types four and five, if that's all you're treating, you can use a Linton IPL for that. Okay. Just to add to that, Haley, with some other IPL systems, I, I sorry, Vicky, I didn't hear the question, but okay. I guess, I'm guessing it was about use of IPL with darker skin types. Yeah. With, with some of the lower powered IPL systems, in order to get the fluids that's required, they just extend the amount of shorter wavelengths of light that they're letting through. So mm -hmm. our, our, ours cuts on around about 650 nanometers, but some people are letting through some of those shorter wavelengths just so that they can get enough fluids, but actually they're far more dangerous for darker skin types. So that's why some IPLs are just limited to, you know, treatment of skin type yeah. for particular mm -hmm. for example. Okay, well, we're almost out of time, but we have got one more question. So I think we'll, we'll answer that um, quickly. <laughs> so um, do you have any tips on working on difficult areas such as the bikini line? So for a Hollywood type um, hair removal, um, as the skin there can be loose, it's not a flat area. And then someone said that they find it tricky to move the handpiece fast enough not to cause any sudden heat or pain in those kind of areas. Yeah, we do actually. So we've developed some nifty little um, ways around that. Uh, I know Alice May, I know the customer. So if we, we can come back to her, it's more like technique this one as opposed to a an overall answer. But yeah, we can definitely work around that uh, with the okay. handpiece. Fantastic. And um, oh, we just have one final question, which is how much do you charge per session and how much does, oh, well, you said about the machine cost. So um, Haley's put her details in the chat. So um, it's uh, in info at linton.co.uk um, so if you've got any questions like that get in touch with them and i'm sure that yeah. they can help you with yeah, those happy to answer any other questions yeah okay thank you so much um uh, sam and Haley, for joining us this morning that was a really interesting session um let's hope the clinics will be opening up um again in a few weeks time we can start um people can start coming back in for treatments <laughs> yeah <laughs> super thank you very much Thanks,